Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Stocks crashed on Tuesday, devastating investors, after the most recent inflation statistics exceeded anticipations, which we will talk more about a little later in the video. However, things were bright for companies like JetBlue as well as Lyft. For instance, JetBlue recently surged by 22% in their share price after a mainstream investor acquired a 10% stake in this airline. But let's talk a little bit more about interest rates. These interest rates were actually not too bad since inflation is reasonably close to the Federal Reserve's 2% yearly target. As an example, we saw used cars and clothes actually become more affordable over the last month. However, on the opposite end, we saw a sizable jump in housing expenses, which was the culprit for most of the previous month's consumer price growth. Also, if you've eaten out recently, food is becoming more costly whether or not you are eating out or buying groceries. As an example, grocery prices increased more than in earlier months while dining out became 5.1% more expensive than the year before. So clearly, inflation is being extremely dynamic right now, which is not good for the general stock market. However, when the Federal Reserve does decrease interest rates, this will act as a positive catalyst which will lift the indexes, meaning that it's a great time to invest right now before that happens. In our next story, let's talk about Uber and and Lyft. As a part of a countrywide strike by Uber and Lyft drivers as well as DoorDash delivery workers, this strike happened on one of the busiest days of the year for ride hailing and delivery apps. And this comes a week after Lyft announced it would guarantee weekly earnings in a bid to attract more drivers, and Uber posted its first annual profit since going public. So it seems that Lyft and Uber had very good news updates recently, however clearly this is pretty catastrophic. Lyft in particular has had a turbulent week after its stock increased yesterday in after hours trading due to a typo in their earnings release, but since then the share price has pulled back and corrected, and if you want more information on this, feel free to watch yesterday's video. Next, let's talk about Paramount Global, which recently cut 800 jobs, and this would equate to around 3% of their workforce. Paramount Global is not one of my favorite investments, and honestly, I don't even hold them in my portfolio, but I do know that some investors really tend to like them, so I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below. Next up in the news, we have Tesla, and Tesla has really been going through it lately. Tesla has had a very rough six weeks in this new year because they are one of the worst performing S&P 500 stocks by shedding approximately $215 billion worth of market cap. To put this into perspective, this is seven times what Boeing has lost recently, and we all know what's been happening with Boeing drama, and if you want more news on Boeing, feel free to watch our previous videos. Tesla has consistently brought in bad news for investors, however I personally am taking advantage of this as a great buying opportunity right now because why wouldn't I love this company when their share price gets even cheaper. As of right now, it's been about two weeks since the Delaware court voided CEO Elon Musk's $56 billion pay package. On top of that, investors haven't been loving Tesla's global price cuts for their electric vehicles, which contributed to car sales growing only by 1% last quarter, despite a record number of 485,000 quarterly deliveries. Tesla also warned investors that its sales growth would be, quote, notably lower this year, and investors did not like to hear that. Tesla has been blaming cooling demand and a growing competition in the EV space as well as higher interest rates, but it seems that investors expect more from Tesla. To top all of this bad news off, Tesla's workers are currently bracing for potential layoffs right now, which will push the share price even lower. But like I've said before, the lower the share price goes, the more I am going to buy into this company. Our next news update involves the casino owner named Penn Entertainment, which plans to launch its ESPN Bet Sports book in New York, which is the largest US betting market. The reason why Penn Entertainment is doing this is to compete with other companies such as DraftKings and FanDuel, which currently have a duopoly over this market. According to current statistics, Penn Entertainment could make up around 20% of the US sports betting market by 2027, meaning that right now may be a good time to invest into this company, but always make sure to do your own research. 
I also want to be transparent with you and I want to tell you that I personally own Pen Entertainment in my portfolio as well as Flutter which is the parent company to FanDuel and DraftKings because I think the sports betting market is anticipated to absolutely explode and I want to ride that wave up so my money makes me even more money by investing into these companies but again always make sure to do your own research. Next up, we have NVIDIA Corporation in the news, which is the very prominent chip maker, which is at the heart of the artificial intelligence wave. Investors need to be paying attention when companies or prominent investors decide to make large investments in various companies, because this could put you ahead of other investors. On Wednesday, NVIDIA, according to the 13F filing, gave a glimpse to investors at the companies which they have invested into. NVIDIA actually has a long history with Arm Holdings, which is a semiconductor company in which NVIDIA attempted to acquire Arm Holdings for $40 billion in 2020. However, the deal ultimately crumbled under regulatory pressure and NVIDIA walked away in February of 2022 from this deal. But that's not all, because NVIDIA also invested into SoundHound, which caused SoundHound shares to jump by 55% after their stake was disclosed. If you're not familiar, SoundHound makes AI software for audio recognition and a plethora of other things. Last but not least, we also see NVIDIA investing into recursion pharmaceuticals with a value of approximately $76 million, while the SoundHound stake was around $3.67, and the ARM stake is around $147.3 million, so clearly ARM is the winner here, which I personally hold in my portfolio. Speaking about what smart money is buying right now, let's talk about billionaire investor Bill Ackman, who recently cut his stake by a significant margin in Lowe's, ticker symbol L-O-W, in quarter four of 2023. Ackman decreased his shares in Lowe's from the original 7.07 .07 million shares down to just 1.25 million shares, which would equate to around an 82.4% decrease. This is what I'm talking about when I say that investors need to be paying attention to what smart money is doing right now because potentially Lowe's could be going through a giant low right now. But Lowe's is not the only company that he sold recently considering he also sold off some CMG or Chipotle stock. In quarter three, he had around 954,000 shares of Chipotle, but now he only has around 825,000 shares, which equates to around a 13.5% decrease. Likewise, he also sold shares of Hilton Worldwide, ticker symbol HLT, and his shares dropped from 10.31 million in quarter three to 9.18 million in quarter four, representing around a 10.9% decline. But Bill Ackman is not the only prominent investor which is selling companies right now because Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway is also doing something similar. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway has sold shares of Apple, Paramount Global, and HP in the fourth quarter, while also adding to their investment in Chevron, which we talked about in our last video. Berkshire Hathaway sold around 10 million shares of Apple, and now they hold around 905 million shares of the iPhone maker, which is worth around $166 billion for Berkshire Hathaway's holding. But it's not all a doom and gloom, considering that Berkshire Hathaway added to their holdings in Chevron, buying up 16 million shares of the number two domestic energy company in the United States. And this would bring their total investment in Chevron to around 126 million shares, worth a nine. $19 billion in total. Regarding the other companies, Berkshire Hathaway sold a third of their investment in Paramount Global in the fourth quarter, which means they currently hold around 63 million shares of this media company. And last but not least, Berkshire Hathaway has continued to sell their stake in HP, which is the PC and a printer maker, dropping their holdings by around 80 million shares to where now they hold only 23 million shares left as of the fourth quarter. However, there is another company that is well-loved by Warren Buffett and at Berkshire Hathaway, and that is none other than the U.S. oil producer named Occidental Petroleum, which recently brought in an earnings beat to where they beat their fourth quarter estimates in regards to their profit. This company literally delivered one of their best earnings results in the last three years while trimming expenses and spending. On top of that, you should also know that Occidental increased its quarterly dividend payments by 22% to where now you will receive 22 cents per share of this company. So this is another behemoth that you should look into. And just like in our last video, I actually encouraged you to look into Chevron and Occidental Petroleum. Therefore, for more information on that, feel free to watch yesterday's video. Next up, let's talk about the internet networking pioneer, which is Cisco Systems. 
In the latest news update for this company, they have laid off around 4,000 employees. Honestly, I am not surprised to see Cisco Systems purge and lay off more employees because if you recall, in late 2022, they also decided to cut back and they laid off around 5,000 workers ahead of its $28 billion acquisition of Splunk. Now, the good news here is that management now expects their acquisition of Splunk to be completed by April 30th, which is going to be a great catalyst for Cisco. We also see Cisco Systems going through somewhat of a reorganization phase, which will cost around $800 million, but at the end of the day, this is going to be worth it for this phenomenal company. Speaking about phenomenal companies which are laying off employees right now, let's talk about Morgan Stanley, which is planning to cut hundreds of jobs in their wealth management unit. However, unlike Cisco Systems, the cuts will impact less than 1% of the division's employees. The reason for this is because in the last quarter, revenue for Morgan Stanley's wealth management unit was flat compared to the year earlier. This is one of the reasons why the CEO decided to reduce the workforce in this particular unit because they are just not making a lot of money right now. But don't be led astray because I personally really like Morgan Stanley as an investment and I personally hold them in my portfolio. Next up, let's talk about ChargePoint, ticker symbol CHPT, because their stock is surging right now. If you didn't know, ChargePoint is an electric vehicle charging specialist and their price recently surged by 11.7%. The reason why ChargePoint's share price is increasing right now is actually due to another company called Blink Charging. Blink Charging is also a charging specialist and they recently released better than expected preliminary fourth quarter results which got investors extremely excited about both the Blink Charging as well as ChargePoint or just charging stocks in general. Although ChargePoint and Blink are rivals, the company's preliminary quarter four results are actually so good that it lifted all or at least most charging stocks. This communicates to investors that the industry is very strong right now, which led to investors flooding into ChargePoint, causing their share price to increase. The company expects to report revenue of around $42 million for the fourth quarter, which is extremely good, even though analysts estimated that the company would only bring in around $34.3 million, so clearly they dominated and beat expectations in regards to the revenue. On top of that, for the full year, management expects revenue of more than $140 million, again beating analysts' guidance, which came in between $128 million to $133 million for the year. These preliminary results have pushed the stock upwards by around 30% as of right now, causing both Blink Charging and ChargePoint to surge in their share price. And for context, ChargePoint is scheduled to report their own quarter four results on March 5th, so feel free to look out for that. Next up, let's talk about Coinbase, which is a cryptocurrency platform that allows you to trade and exchange cryptocurrencies. As of right now, it is agreed upon by analysts that Coinbase's revenue will increase to around $826.1 million from the original $674.1 million that they brought in during the previous quarter. On top of that, their earnings per share, or EPS, is also anticipated to impress. As an example, a Needham analyst even said this about the company, and I quote, We expect quarter four to be a strong quarter for the company, as a volumes return to the space and interest income held up. Lastly, to round out the video, let's talk about other companies which are anticipated to release earnings tomorrow besides Coinbase, because we have companies like Roku, Applied Materials, The Trade Desk, as well as DraftKings. So if you want to hear an update about any or all of those companies, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next YT video.